is Radio Havana, Cuba. Broadcasting from Cuba, free territory in the Americas. Radio Havana, Cuba is coming to you on the 49-meter band at 6,000 kilohertz, on the 31-meter band at 9,820 kilohertz, and on the 25-meter band at 11,705 kilohertz on single sideband. Radio Havana, Cuba now brings you our news bulletin for this Tuesday broadcast. I'm Langston Wright. Political leaders worldwide have reacted with shock, consternation, and horror following what is being called the most devastating terrorist attack in U.S. history, comparable only to the surprise Japanese bombardment of Pearl Harbor in 1941. Civilian airliners, apparently hijacked by suicide attackers, crashed into and destroyed the Twin Towers of New York's World Trade Center, while two other airplanes crashed into the Pentagon and Camp David, and a powerful car bomb exploded in front of the State Department, throwing Washington and New York into chaos. New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani said the number of victims could be horrendous. The United States is practically isolated from the rest of the world, following the closure of all the country's airports and the canceling of all flights to the U.S. from abroad. U.S. military forces have been placed on maximum alert. Cuban Foreign Minister Felipe Perez Roque has insisted that Cuba will continue infiltrating agents into the United States to prevent terrorist actions against the island. Perez Roque said that Cuba's only option is to continue seeking out information using its own methods in response to questions from journalists regarding the arrest in late August of another two Cuban Americans suspected of spying on behalf of Cuba. The Cuban foreign minister denied, however, that Cuba's agents are spying against the U.S. government, reiterating that Cuba seeks information concerning the activities of Cuban American exile groups responsible for terrorist attacks like the 1997 bomb explosion in a Havana hotel that claimed the life of an Italian tourist. He added that Cuba not only has no other option but also has the right to seek out pertinent information due to the impunity enjoyed by exile groups principally in Miami engaging in terrorist activities. Perez Roque said the most recent arrests constitute a maneuver aimed at influencing the sentences to be dictated against five other Cubans wrongly convicted of spying against the U.S. government. Federal authorities arrested in late August the Cuban-American couple Jorge and Marisol Gatti, who have resided in the United States for the past 10 years. Cuban authorities have repeatedly insisted that those arrested in the United States for attempting to prevent terrorist actions against Cuba are considered heroes and patriots here on the island. Havana has reiterated that traffickers of illegal Cuban immigrants are operating from bases in Florida, not in Cuba. Cuban journalists and experts participating Monday evening in a televised roundtable discussion refuted with abundant evidence what they called another anti-Cuba campaign mounted in Miami and supported by officials of the U.S. Coast Guard. Roundtable participants made reference to recent statements by Coast Guard spokesman in Miami, Norberto Gomez, who claimed that Cuban vessels can be easily contracted to carry illegal immigrants to Florida. The Cuban journalists and officials revealed the content of numerous messages sent by Cuban border troops to the U.S. Coast Guard, detailing the movement of speed boats with registration in Florida, noting that Cuban authorities have never received responses to these message from, messages rather, from U.S. authorities. Havana has also provided U.S. authorities with the names and places of residence of a large number of immigrant traffickers residing in Miami who continue in the dangerous and lucrative business. Participants in the televised program noted that since April 1998, Cuban authorities have arrested 111 traffickers of illegal immigrants, of whom three are U.S. citizens, 18 are permanent Cuban residents in the United States, and 87 are temporary residents. Thus far, 38 traffickers have been convicted in Cuban courts, one to life imprisonment, two to 30 years in prison, one to 27 years, two to 25 years, 12 to 20 years, and another 20 to sentences ranging 
ranging from 10 to 18 years in prison. You've been listening to Radio Havana Cuba's News Bulletin for this Tuesday broadcast from our studios in Havana. I'm Langston Wright. You're tuned to Radio Havana Cuba and I'm Isabel Garcia. We would like to receive your suggestions, comments, or just drop us a line to say hello. Our address is Radio Havana Cuba, P.O. Box 6240 Havana Cuba. That's Radio Havana Cuba, P.O. Box 6240 Havana Cuba. You can also email us, and our address is English at rhc.cu. Once again, our email address is English at rhc.cu. We also have a website with news, commentaries, sports, and the cultural segment. That address is www.radiohc.cu. Once again, our website address is www.radiohc.cu. Today is the 28th anniversary of the death of former Chilean President Salvador Allende. We express our solidarity with the Chilean people. Up next, we have the latest in the world of amateur sports. For the first time in history, Cuban rowers in the junior category win a gold, two silver, and a bronze medal at the World Championship. This has been a very solid result for sports that is slowly but steadily making its way towards the world elite. The junior rowers are following the steps of their counterparts in the major division. Lancy Martinez is the new world champion in the K1 over 500 meters, while Aldo Pruna and Ariel Rodriguez were second place in C2. K1 and C2 over 1,000 meters reported the other silver and the bronze medal grabbed by the island over the weekend. These are positive signals for rowing on the island. Kayak has been absent for a while from Olympic Games, World Championships and World Cups. The first steps were made by Lady Frank Balseiro, Lobaldo Pereira and Ibrahim Rojas winners of the first world and Olympic medals for the island. So these results in the junior category guarantee a continuation in the future. Two disabled Cuban athletes of the National Association for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired won the Guatemala City Marathon race over 10 kilometers. Hermes Dargen from Eastern Santiago de Cuba entered in first place with a time of 35.20 minutes, followed in second place by the teammate Juan Rodriguez with 35.48 minutes. Mexico was third. Javier Castro Pena, also from Cuba, entered its fifth in fifth place, coming in 42.05 minutes. And 505 runners from nine countries were on hand for the marathon race for the disabled. the international arena, the Bolivarianos Games are taking place in Ecuador with the participation of five countries, Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, Peru, and Venezuela, the defending champion. So far, Venezuela seems unbeatable on the top, accumulating 62 gold medals, while Colombia, its closest rival, appears with 18 titles, followed by the host country with 14. Yesterday, Venezuela chalked up six gold in rhythmic gymnastics to in shooting, cycling, and bowling and three silver in cycling and judo. However, it also suffered a setback. In tennis, Jimmy Zismanski lost to Colombian Michael Quinteros in singles. Colombia enjoyed the victory in women's volleyball after defeating Venezuela. Ecuador grabbed three in sailing and a similar number in judo, while cyclist Daniel Rouda dominated in mountain bike. There was a sad note, however, with the fist fight between soccer players from Colombia and Venezuela. The incident took place after the end of the Venezuela-Peru game tied at one, which preceded the Colombia-Bolivia game won by Colombia. It's not certain how the brawl started and official protests have been presented. The Bolivarianos games with competitions in 33 disciplines will be running until Sunday, September 16th. And here I have the, some new flashes. 
The Blue Marlin Fishing Tournament, organized by Havana's Hemingway Marina, wound up over the weekend with a victory for the J. Hook crew from the United States. J. Hook accumulated 1.350 points with three catches, following the tag and release method. Second place went to a British crew led by Pete Sullivan, who had Pedro Calvo as captain and Jorge Juvero, a sailor on board the Criola second. The true players from the United States was third. The second international forum on elite sports will be taking place in Barcelona until Thursday. More than 160 experts from 38 countries are on hand for this second Congress following the inaugural event in Australia two years ago. High on the agenda is high-performance sports, its evolution and the renovation of training methods. South African shot put expert Berger Lambrecht has been sanctioned to a two-year suspension following two anti-doping controls. The announcement was made by the South African Federation on Monday. The 28-year-old athlete tested positive for first on February 16th and again a week later. Lambrecht, who has not been competing for the past six months, won gold at the Africa Championships and at the Commonwealth Games. An Argentinian tennis player, Jose Acasuso, was eliminated Monday during his first appearance at the Bucharest Tennis Tournament, which grants points for the APT list. He lost to Chairman Thomas Berend with 7-6, 75 and 64. The tournament will distribute $400,000 in prizes. And there's been a look at some of the latest sports news here on Radio Havana, Cuba. I'm Luis Alberto Chirino. to remind our listeners that we are broadcasting in audio on internet and that address is www.radiohc.cu once again our internet address is www.radiohc.cu up next we have Arnie Cotto with his DXers Unlimited CQ the X, CQ the X, CQ the X. This is Havana calling. CQ the X, CQ the X, CQ the X. This is Radio Havana calling all shortwave listeners and radio amateurs. Welcome to... Unlimited, Radio Havana's weekly feature dedicated to the fascinating world of radio communications. Hi, amigos radio aficionados. Welcome to the midweek edition of The Access Unlimited, your favorite radio hobby program, reaching you now via shortwave, via live audio feeds on the World Wide Web, and you can also get the scripts by subscribing to our low-traffic volume mailing list. I am Arnaldo Arnicoro, your friend here in Havana and host of this.